Coming up on the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, Doc Chocolate from the Bulls and Queens podcast is here to talk all about the allure of interracial. I feel like there's certain scents that will just like set me off and remind me of just an incredible experience that I've had with somebody. Coconut. Coconut oil is one of those things. Every time I smell coconut oil, I'm like, oh, fuck me now. (laughs) Me too. Mm, There's just something about that. Somebody should have some like room fragrance spray or candles of like BBC scented, (laughs) you know. Okay. What, what is, so, so, hold on. do you, okay, so do, do you like, when you smell coconut oil, or, or are you like reminded of black men? Yeah. Oh, fuck really? yeah. Oh, oh seriously. A hundred percent. Yes. Oh, yeah. You guys got that shit going on at your. <laughs> Fuck. Every time I go into the bathroom, there's like, you go into some white guy's bathroom, there's like a bar of like Irish Spring soap <laughs> and like fucking head and shoulders fucking shampoo. Okay. Two in one shampoo. Oh, okay. You go, into one. Guy, you go into a black guy's bathroom. Oh my God. He's got like 10 different body care moisturizer body butter like fuck <laughs> all this shit and it, it smells amazing and... what does the queen of space smell like i feel like y'all smell like roses and shit and lavender uh, just you smell like lavender you look like you smell like lavender no i smell like exceptional pussy That's what <laughs> You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast, ask a question for the show, and find the elusive Venus Vault, a sneak peek behind the bedroom door. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. To this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. I'm your host, Venus. Thanks so much for joining me. And do I have a show for you? <laughs> I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one as I was editing it, which <laughs> I hate. I normally I hate editing, but oh my God, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> I was editing this one. This is going to be hilarious. So I hope you really enjoy it. I have Doc Chocolate who's joining me on the show today and he is the host of the Bulls and Queens podcast. You may have heard of it. It's fairly new, but it is a lot of fun and you can tell this guy likes to have a good time. So today we're going to talk about interracial and a few other things, but yeah, we're going to talk about that fucking sexy allure of black men in this lifestyle. So it's going to be good. And just before we jump into that, I just want to mention thank you so much for This new review that I have on Apple, it's from Dookie Bear, and I really appreciate it. It says, best pod to share with the wife. And uh, he said, many sexy and practical tips and stories with a great female lead. Thank you so much for posting that. I've had a lot of fucking weird ass butt hurt trolls posting nasty reviews on, on Apple. So I really do appreciate that you reached out and made that nice positive review for me. I I like that a lot. So if you love this show, I would really appreciate it if you went on Apple and posted a 
positive review so that we can drown out the haters. That would be great. And there's going to be another Pillow Talk event that will be coming up soon. So make sure you check out venuscuckoldress.com. Click on the tab that says Pillow Talk and you'll be able to see what's going on for that and register for that event. All right, let's just jump right into this one. Here we go. Here is my interview with Doc Chocolate. Joining me on the show today, I have a very special guest who I'm really excited to be talking to. I This is actually the second time we have chatted because I have been on his podcast, the Bulls and Queens podcast. This is Doc Chocolate, and he is a BBC Bull out of Las Vegas and, of course, the host of the Bulls and Queens podcast, which is fairly new. So thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Doc Chocolate, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello, everybody, you sexy-ass people. How y'all doing today? (laughs) Just before this, Doc said that I should introduce him as a – that one – that. BBC Bull who jumps out of birthday cakes for Canadian podcasters. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Let's do that. So anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I have to because like whenever I get a chance to talk to a beautiful Canadian podcaster, I always have to shoot my shot. And so I just (laughs) I just may hit it. So, yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that. Well, you do have a very sexy voice, and I'm sure that's not the first time you have heard that. Uh, So I really appreciate listening to you on your podcast. I remember when you messaged me, I think it was on Instagram, and you were like, hey, I'm coming out with this podcast. And I was like, who is this? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, hey, Vetus, I was like a total fanboy, and I was uh, listening to you like, Last year, this is when I started researching all the lifestyle podcasts, and I listened to your podcast, and I was like, I like this lady, and I totally, I was like, hey, I'm going to start a podcast, and I was like, Vitas is number one in my book to get on my podcast, so I shot my shot, baby. Well, I like, I think I was on your show near the beginning, I I think, if I remember correctly. Um, Okay, so tell me. The story of how you got to be where you are today. How'd you get to this spot where you're at right now? All right. Well, two black people got together around 1979 and had sex. And no, that was that was a funny. <laughs> you can edit that out. But uh, no, don't edit that out. <laughs> people are listening to this and they're like, what the fuck? Fuck this guy. <laughs> no, uh, it all started back in 2016. And... My wife and I, her name's Caramel, uh, we are both, you know, just your regular couple out here in Las Vegas. And we watched a movie on Netflix and it was like a little comedy movie where uh, there was two couples. One couple was like a veteran swinger and then swinger couple. And then the other couple, they were like the prey who this veteran couple were trying to like convinced to get back to their bedroom right and so it was like a comedy slash drama and it was funny as hell and don't ask me what the name of it is because for the life of me, ask you, what's the name hey it's like <laughs> i'm reading your mind venus <laughs> and I, I, I promise you so many people ask me that question and i i can't find it to this day and so anyways like caramel started asking me after that like well hey doc um what would you think if we did something like that or what do you think about that or this or that and at first venus i thought that she was just testing me you know how you women do it like i thought she was just testing me yeah. to see like hey what's this motherfucker gonna say is he gonna say the right <laughs> thing or the wrong thing you know and i'm not trying to get my throat slit so i said the right thing i was like well that was pretty interesting caramel and i said <laughs> but you know me i'm very very faithful <laughs> so <laughs> never crossed my mind right and so you know of course i'm lying like hell and so anyways, long story short, uh, Venus, she asked me that question a few more times over the span of maybe three, four months. And then finally, she just outright blasted me, you know, because I was acting stupid. And she was like, hey, I think that we should really do this. And at first, I was super, super butthurt. And I was totally acting like a bitch boy because uh, I was thinking in my head, like, well, what? My dick isn't good enough for you. And then after I had 24 hours of being a little bitch, 
I, you know, came to myself and, you know, I promise you, Vita's my voice got high. I was like, what do you mean you don't want, you want somebody else? What do you mean? You know, finally finally the bass came back to my voice and I was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. You know, because I mean, yeah, we, we, we been together since 2000. And so at that point, you know, we had been together for 16 years and I was her first. And um, I think I had maybe five or six or seven ladies before her. So um, it, it just makes sense that she should be able to to take a dive into the pool, right? A pool of dips, yeah. sausages. And so anyways, long story short, like we jumped into it and here we are today. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you started into the whole swinging thing. So I'm assuming, and that's so cool that she's the one who pushed it. I love yep. that. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Good for her. So I'm assuming that was all fun and everything. So how did it kind of, how did you delve into the whole like BBC kind of interracial thing? Great question. So what happened was, um, and, and I think this happens with a lot of people, Venus, when you jump into the lifestyle initially, you believe that there's only maybe one particular way of doing it. Right. And so I think just based off of my conversations with other people in the past, pretty much everybody thinks, okay, well, Hey, you got to swap. Right. So like, you know, like if, if me and my wife met you and your guy, it's like, okay, well, Hey, me and Venus get together. And then uh, my wife and your guy get together, you know, and that's what we were thinking. Right. And uh, what happened, what had happened was she, Caramel, she was a little bit not feeling the swappy thing. Right. And so we did some male, female males, some MFMs and she was cool with that, but she just couldn't quite get into the, the swapping thing. Right. And so we would go to these parties and we would go to these like clothing optional parties. And I would just go out to these pool parties and I'm like a little male whore. And I was just like slaying woman left and right and like it was Don't crazy say. <laughs> what i'm a, I, I try to be a good boy venus but sometimes <laughs> i think with the wrong head i guess but like um w- what i noticed was that a lot of uh, white couples would reach out to me on adult friend finder and they would uh say hey we want to play with you and I just want to watch, you know, talking about the guy because usually it was the guy that was hitting me up. And at first I thought it was a bit weird or off, you know, because I'm like, okay, well, okay. Yeah. You're allowing me to play with your wife. So I get that. But, you know, on my side, there's no reciprocation, you know? So I'm thinking in my head, what are you getting out of it? Right. Yeah. And, you know, it happened multiple times and I started seeing a pattern and, you know, I started doing the research and I was like, oh, this, this is a thing. And then that's when I started learning about cuckolding and um, all that. So that was it within the last few years then, would you say? Yeah, I, I would say Venus, it probably started happening maybe 2018, I want to say. Okay. And um, so when did you like first come across this term, like queen of spades? Do you remember? Um, My memory is a little bit foggy, but <laughs> I think it probably was around that time period. Um, actually, you know what? I, I think it was more around the time when I started listening to your podcast. So this would probably be around 2021. And so some, a lady had contacted me, right. And she was doing all the communication with me and she called herself a queen of spades. And I was like, what the fuck is a queen of spades? I was like, are you playing cards or something? I was like, is this spades or, you know, we playing poker or blackjack? I was like, what the fuck is that? And so I researched it. And then I was like, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, they actually get tattoos with a spade. I was like, this is very, very interesting. And, um, and the places that y'all were getting tats- those space tattoos at Venus, I was like, oh my God, it hit me excited. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I, I, I was an instant fan. Yeah, I have three Queen of Spades tattoos. And yes. the very first one that I got is right above my pussy. And it is my favorite to this day. Love it so much. That makes for epic photos. <laughs> Can I tell you something? What? 
That is my favorite tattoo on you as well. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I don't think I need any more than three. Three is probably good. good uh, It's going to do the job, I think. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. I I think you're sending the signal out into the world that, hey, I'm that girl. Yeah, but I, I had the same kind of reaction when I first learned about this term queen of spades. I was like... Wow, like that's amazing. I I knew right away I wanted it. I was like, yep, hundred percent. That's that's me. Like <laughs> Can, I, can and, I ask you and, a quick question? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so like what made you where you had your mindset on, hey, I wanna fuck a bunch of big black cocks and dudes and shit like that. Well, you know what? Um, Funny enough, like I had fucked maybe only like one or two black guys before I got into the swingers lifestyle. And there was this one couple, uh, she's from Trinidad. He's from Jamaica. Beautiful couple. They walked into this house party and I was like, oh, hello. (laughs) (laughs) I was there as a solo with my girlfriend and um and I had like walked right up to him and I was like, Hey, like I like you. And he was he said to me afterwards, like, you're the first woman that's ever done that. And I was like, Really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, him and I, we had a fucking great time. Like, oh my God, we saw each other lots of times. He was able to play solo with me and his wife played with others and stuff like that. And so it was great and everything like that until she, I think, got uncomfortable with how much fun we were having. And she was like I'm slamming the door on that one. So I was like, fuck no. <laughs> I was so upset. I was like, no. <laughs> so after that, I had it in my mind where I was like, God, I would like love to find that again. That was a really great experience, right? And uh-huh. um, And it was that it was a great experience with him. And, but it was like, also, I loved his dark skin. I was like, oh my God, he's just so beautiful and he's so fucking smooth and everything. And I was just like, oh, I love it. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> when I met this cuck, uh, first cuck that I ever met, he, he told me, um, he told me about this lifestyle and I was already fucking like, however many guys I wanted to fuck it, whatever I wanted. Mm-hmm. But he suggested black guys, and I was like, um, yes. Huh? <laughs> You're like, yeah. sold. Yeah, I was like, because like where I live, I live here in Canada, and I live in a city in Canada where we don't have a lot of black people. I mean, I could go weeks without seeing any black people. There's a lot of South Asian and Asian people here in this city where I live. So, I mean, it's that it's not it's not easy so i took it as like a task i was like yes i'm going to you know <laughs> speak about it. like yes and so that's what i did i s- sought them out but even still it took me probably about a year until i realized i was still fucking white guys and black guys and whatever but i it took me about at that time maybe 8 months to a year where i was just like you know i just i'm really enjoying these black guys in my life like <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Like I, I th- I'm, I'm sensing a preference, and so that's where the preference was created and really solidified. Because I guess I'd always had that preference, but it was really solidified then. And then, yeah, I found out about the Queen of Spades thing, and I was like, "That's a fucking fabulous idea!" <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but, he was like, "I fit right in." Yeah, it took me a, it took me years until I heard any controversy about about it. Now I don't know if that's because I'm here in Canada. There, the racial taboo of it is not really a thing like it is in the United States. So for me, it was never about any sort of taboo with black guys ever. So it was, it was always just like a f- truly a sexual preference, and it still is. So yeah, yeah, and and, and, and I mean the thing is like uh, with Queen of Spades, you know, I, I was arguing back and forth with uh with another brother, and um uh because I said, all right. Well, have you ever been called the N word, right? And yeah, all of us have, right? And uh, I was like, all right, that's derogatory. But I said, has anybody ever come to you and said, "Hey, you dirty little spade"? 
<laughs> yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, hey, I'm 42 years old, all right? And nobody in their life has ever said that to me, like, hey, you spade, you know? like. Yeah. I know. I was kind of shocked by it because I was like, I I had only ever met guys, black guys who loved this idea and yeah. like fully immersed themselves in it. And they were like, this is amazing. And I'd never met anyone who was uncomfortable with it. So when I first came across that, I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I did hear them out and I heard, you know, I've heard the other stuff the side of things and stuff like that. But it's, I don't know, I guess it's different for me because I'm up here in Canada, but I love the term queen of spades. I think it is um, a form of uh, sexual preference, but also just really adoring the black men that I have in my life. Like, yeah, yeah. I really do love them platonically. And, and that's not to say that it's love is insignificant. Like it, I, would be devastated if I didn't have these men in my life. So it's not like they're just, you know, somebody to use as a dick of the day kind of thing. So <laughs> dick du jour. I got you. I got you. I got you. Well, you know what I, I mean, mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Cause like, cause like there's different facets of love and there's different buckets of love. I mean, you have emotional, you have physical, spiritual and sexual. Right. And sometimes uh, people can't fill certain buckets or all the buckets or whatever the case is. And like, as we evolve and truly find ourselves, right? Because like you and I were both about the same age. We're both, you know, in our early to mid forties. And when, as we mature and get older, we pretty much find who we are and what we like. And it is what it is. And there's nothing wrong with it as long as we're not harming other people. And that's just my personal opinion. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's kind of when I learned that there are couples out there treating black guys like shit. And then uh, that yeah. really pissed me off. That made me mad, made me want to beat up people, honestly. <laughs> 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 and so I have no patience for that kind of shit. That doesn't belong in the lifestyle at all. Like fuck off with that nonsense, you know? You know, I that's agree. not cool. So yeah. Um, interracial. I was listening to, I think it was the very first episode of your podcast, the intro episode, where you were talking about what is a queen of spades. And then you went into this like list of reasons why queen of spades really into black eyes. And it was, I will, I, it was memorable for me because I was listening and I was nodding my head and I was going, yes. <laughs> oh yes. That is exactly it. Like, yes. Thank you for saying that. That like, it's like you pinned every single fucking thing that is the reason why I am so like sexually attracted to black guys. And I was like, <laughs> thank you for fucking saying it. So tell me, tell me, tell me again, tell all the listeners right now, what do you think it is? What have, what's been your experience about why women are so fucking attracted to black Oh man, Venus, you putting me on the spot. I okay. am. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So my personal opinion on why women uh, find black men sexually attractive is just uh, the contrast in skin tones and uh, just the masculinity that we can bring and the passion and just the smoothness and the fact that we have that confidence. We just come in and we are pleasers. So we love to please our woman that we're with. We love to uh, make sure that you're sexually pleased, you're physically pleased, emotionally pleased, and we're competitive at that as well. So when we're with a woman, at least from my perspective, I try to make sure that I'm winning the gold medal, you know, because I don't want silver or bronze. I want to have that gold medal. I want to be that guy that's standing at the podium with the Star Spangled Banner. I'm I apologize, you're Canadian, but I had a Star Spangled Banner playing in the background and I got my hand over my heart seeing that American flag flying over me. You know, I want to just like make this the best experience that the woman has ever had. And it's not just from the physical standpoint, but it's also from the the environment. So I want to make sure that uh, the sound, the look, the lighting, the smells and the whole thing that's surrounding it is sensual. I want to make sure that the right music is playing and that you just 
totally have an experience. And that's actually one thing that kind of gets me off. Now, um, do all bulls or wannabe bulls act like that? No, you know, but I feel like a good percentage of black men that do call themselves bulls, I feel like they, they roll like that. Oh, they really do. Yeah. I feel like there's certain scents that will just like set me off and remind me of just an incredible experience that I've had with somebody. Coconut. Coconut oil is oh, one of those yes. things. Yes. Every time I smell coconut oil, I'm like, oh, fuck me now. <laughs> me too. Me too. I love coconut oil. Coconut oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so guys, if you ever get a chance or the luck to meet up with Venus, coconut oil. Coconut oil. It is so true. <laughs> Mm, there's just something about that. Somebody should have some like room fragrance spray or candles of like BBC scented, <laughs> you know. What is, so, so, <laughs> hold on. do you, okay, so do, do you like, when you smell coconut oil, are or, or you like reminded of black men? Yeah. Oh, fuck really? yeah. Oh, oh 100%, seriously. A hundred percent. Yes. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, you guys got that shit going on. You're <laughs> fuck. Every time I go into the bathroom, there's like you go into some white guy's bathroom. There's like a bar of like Irish Spring soap <laughs> and like fucking Head and Shoulders fucking shampoo. Okay, two in one oh, shampoo. Man. Okay, you go two into a black guy, you go into a black guy's bathroom. Oh my god, he's got like ten different body care. <laughs> moisturizer body butter like fuck all this shit and it, it smells amazing and- <laughs> hey, hey she's right she's right yes, i know i know i laugh about this with my girlfriend <laughs> yeah she's right yeah, hey hey because like yeah you go into my bathroom i got the baby oil um oh, i yeah. got two things of baby oil i got like the the vaseline with uh, cocoa butter smell to it from my head. Uh-huh. I got the beard oil, the citrus, and then I got the beard cream. And yeah. I got the coconut, uh, no, the cocoa butter lotion. Yep. And yeah, 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 yeah you got it. I even got this conditioner is- for my beard. Oh, fuck. And you guys smell amazing. It's like, oh, it's so good. But yeah, somebody needs to make a fucking candle. <laughs> Let's do it together. Let's have a joint venture. Like we're both entrepreneurs, Venus. Let's do it. Yes, BBC said. <laughs> what does the Queen of Space smell like? Ideas, though. Come on. What does, what does the Queen of Space smell like? I feel like y'all smell like roses and shit and lavender. Uh, just you smell like lavender. You look like you smell like lavender. No, I smell like exceptional pussy. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Exceptional pussy. Exceptional right pussy. now <laughs> in stores near you. <laughs> yes. Oh God, my cheeks are hurting. Okay. So um where was I going with that? Oh yeah, there was one there was one John I'm distracted. I'm, I'm still stuck on exceptional pussy. <laughs> There was one thing you said in that list too that was something about your the rhythm. Guy, black guys fuck in the rhythm. It is so true. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You guys well, have that. Like it's just a natural fucking thing. Although I did come across one black guy who had no rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> Where did you come from? <laughs> she was like. What happened? Give me your black card back. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, we voted him off the island, Venus. We voted him off the really island. big dick, too. And I was just like, that is a damn shame right there. <laughs> well, uh, oh, okay. So it's like, um, it, okay. So if you have a big ass, huge dick, right? Like, I feel like you got to know how to use it. So one of my like friends with benefits, she told me that, you know, there's this dude and like, uh, he had like a 12 inch, you know, full on hard dick or 10 inch or whatever. I don't know. People make up shit. And so anyways, like she was like, the brother had no rhythm whatsoever. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's like, you got to have some rhythm. It's like, it, it's just like dancing. Like, um, 
you got to be able to match the moves and the flow of the woman that you're with. And every woman has a different flow. And you got to be able to match that woman's flow and her rhythm, just Mm -hmm. like if you're dancing. And I don't know why, like, black guys can dance. We just love it. Oh, black guys can dance and just natural, like just fucking dance. And white guys look ridiculous. Like, I mean, not all white guys. Not all, not all white guys. There's a few that have figured it out. And it's a, it's amusing <laughs> watching them, but or it's entertaining watching them. But like every black guy can move. And I was just like, mm, that's mm. just feeling that it really <laughs> 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 There is something about that rhythm, though. But for the for the black guys, the very few who do not have that rhythm but have a big dick, I'm like, all right, I'm going into it like this. All right, <clears throat> I'm just going to. Sit on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. See, I, I like that. I like that. Sit See, on top, and I'm gonna take that dick and do what I want with it, and then I'll be happy, and everything will be good. But that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That's actually really smart, V. Because, like, yeah, if you just like get on top and you're like writing them cowgirl style, and hey, y'all need to be taking notes because, like, you know, yeah, not every guy has rhythm, but if you jump on top of him and you're taking control. You all good. And the, oh, trust me, the guy below, he's going to love it. Oh, okay. it's a great view. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hell yeah, it's a great view. You know, seeing him, seeing him titties fluffing down. Like, <laughs> ooh. But yeah, so take notes, everybody. That's what you do if you come across a guy with uh, rhythm skills that are a little bit, you know, dodgy. Off. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Okay, now, now this is one thing that I'll tell you, Venus. Like, if you up there writing a dude cowgirl style – don't get too, too crazy wild where you start jumping off of his dick because there's some girls up there where I got to hold their hips down because like they, they about to jump off my dick and I don't want them to land on top of my dick and break it because that's the thing. Have you heard about that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. That is a thing. (laughs) Yeah. Like this dude told me about it. Like he said that like he was uh, fucking his woman and she jumped off of his dick and landed on the wrong way. And he said his shit got bent and like it was gushing blood and he had to go to the emergency room. And I was like, the devil is a lie. I was like, that ain't happening to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So be careful when you're riding the dick. (laughs) Yeah. Take great care. You just fuck guys with really long dicks, and then you probably don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yes, what she said. Yes. So tell me, what what is it like when for you when somebody refers you to you as a BBC? What does that do for you? How do you feel about it? That's a great question. So um, with black people as a whole in general. Um, People want to make sure that they don't uh, refer to us as like an object, yeah. right? Um, because obviously because of slavery and this and that, right? And so if you're – if a person is just saying that that's like a component of who I am, then I'm totally fine with it. I can roll with it and this and that, right? Mm. But it's just the same as a woman, right? So I, I know that you have your hair dyed uh, uh, lavender, purple, uh, but like – you know, you're blonde, right? Yes. So if somebody just referred to you as, oh, hey, you know, it's just a, that blonde chick or, you know, it's just that blue eyed chick or it's just that, you know, that woman with the pretty ass or the pretty tits, you know, <laughs> the, basically. No, if they refer to me as just exceptional pussy, then <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Here comes that excep- exceptional pussy. <laughs> You're gonna have hundreds of emails right now. <laughs> Subject: Exceptional pussy. Take me in. I want to be your foot boy. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be like, you need to start yourself an OnlyFans page. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's like I get uh, what you're saying, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know it's just an object. Yeah, yeah, because like like even me talking to you, right? Like yes, physically you are a beautiful woman, but you're much much more than just your exterior. You know, it's your interior, right? You know, like I love your spirit, I love what you bring, I love your intelligence, I love how deep you go into uh uh the topics that you talk about. I love your passion for uh cuckolding and I love your conversation, like the way you cuss every other sentence, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's it i love the fact that you're a business person as well an entrepreneur because i am as well and the thing is like we're all like a compilation of different 
things. And so like, we don't want to be objectified. At least I don't. So I I hate it when people are like, uh, you know, Hey, wife is looking for a BBC. You want to join in the party or, Hey, can you go get, find me two more BBCs? And and I'm like, cringy. It's cringy. Yeah, it is. Like, (laughs) fuck off. (laughs) I know. Right. I know. I know. And I have noticed that more, uh, I think lately, just because of the conversation being um, happening, which is great that the conversation is happening, but I have, I've noticed that and corrected people when they say, like, refer to a black guy as a BBC. And I'm like, okay, that's fine if he wants to be called that. But like, you don't just throw that out there. Like you, it, he is a fucking beautiful black man. <laughs> God bless you. Beautiful. <laughs> Sent from the heavens. <laughs> God bless you. You make me feel so good. <laughs> All right. So with this podcast, then, um, you, what is it? Once a week that you throw out episodes? It's okay. So it's supposed to be once a week, but I have been like trying to go over achiever and like 10 xing this shit. And so I've been doing like two episodes a week. And like, cause I'm like six weeks behind on my production and publishing. So I'm doing about two times a week. I may even get a little bit crazy and test out three times a week. I don't know. How do you come up with content that often? Oh, well, like I have, um, about maybe 12 episodes that I've recorded solo or that, um, my wife and I have recorded together oh, and then I'm always getting people that want to be interviewed. So just having people that want to be interviewed, whether they're cuckold, whether they're in uh stack vixen relationships, interracial relationships, that sort of thing. Like I, I, I have tons of people that uh, want to be on the show. And so, um, yeah. And okay, they keep just coming. To, just to clarify for the listeners, is it a swingers podcast or is it a cuckolding podcast? I prefer to call it lifestyle because I don't want to be uh, encompassed into just one thing. So initially when I started it, Venus, uh, it was Bulls and Queens, right? So representative of uh, uh, BBC Bulls and Queen of Spades, right? And then from there, you know, it's okay. A queen can be any woman. It doesn't need to just be a white woman that loves uh, black people. You're right. like all women are queens, whether they're, you know, black, white, Asian, Latina, you yeah. know, all women, in my opinion, are queens. And then obviously the cuckolds that love the queens because um, uh, cuckold gentlemen, uh, uh, they're my jam. You know, those are the, my, my people, you know, yeah. and then interracial and then black lifestyles. So, um, but primarily in that realm of uh, people that like to play in a racial, that's like my my major right there. But yeah. like I'm open to anybody in the lifestyle. Well, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of your podcast and I'm a fan of obviously the interracial uh, cuckolding component to it. So I appreciate that there is another voice out there in the podcasting world talking about this beautiful kind of relationship style and this beautiful kind of sexuality ex- uh, of expression of sex- sexuality which is interracial and there's just something really unique about it and so i am happy that you are out there and talking about it and you are obviously having a lot of fun with it which is what i think you what i think people will get um come away with from your your show is that you're clearly having a good time even if it's just you talking you're literally laughing to your own jokes <laughs> That's, that's, that's the first time that, hey that's the first sign that you're not funny is if you laugh at your own jokes you're like ah motherfucker you're not funny <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's it's really entertaining and uh, i like it so um so happy to have the podcast and congratulations on the success it's definitely doing well and you're working hard at it that's amazing so i'm assuming this is your full-time job right podcasting like I wish. How do you have it, time for anything else? <laughs> so, so I, I, I have my own business. And so I have employees that uh, run the show. And mm-hmm. um, I've started to monetize the podcast a bit uh, with OnlyFans and then um, 
other things that I do, parties and whatnot. So I'm, I'm looking at making a full time income from this, uh, possibly by hey. next year. That's awesome. I'm trying, to, Good I, I, I'm trying to be, yeah, I'm trying to be on the Venus train. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that that happens for you. And I'm sure it will. You seem to be very creative with all of your ventures. Speaking of, do you have any projects coming up on the on the horizon that we should know about? Yes, ma'am. I sure do. So I have a... Uh, events and it's a party and it's going to be on saturday june 11th out here in las vegas and i want you all to come by train plane and automobile walk your ass over there if you want and it's going to be a full day event it's going to be a day party at the pool and then we're going to have a lifestyle party where people get nasty and have fun (laughs) at a multi-level suite in Vegas, and it's going to be co-hosted by myself and uh, Kelly Shin. So she's a lovely uh, Blasian uh, woman that uh, I've uh, partnered up with. And for people to get tickets, just come hit me up. So uh, anybody that's lifestyle that wants a party, whether you play or not, uh, it doesn't really. We don't care. Just come out, have fun, meet other people, just be in that whole environment. If you're a cuck, if you're a hot wife, if you're a, a bull, come have fun. You know, as long as you respect women and uh, treat them as queens and you're fun, you're invited, you know, and yeah, pay your money too. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I'm sure it's going to be smelling like coconut oil. Coconut, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and you know what, Venus? You actually gave me an idea. I, I'm going to have uh, look for a coconut oil candle. Yes. Like, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, I smell like black man up in here. Uh, right? I know. I swear to God, if I was to be walking past and I smelled it, I'd be like, oh my God, my pussy is alive right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's tingling over here. What's going on right now? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so what do you have any other and any other things going on that people should know about? Any places that they should visit to learn more about you? Where where do people go when they want to be in the fan club of Doc Chocolate? Oh, I, I like the way you say that. My name. Can you say that again? Doc Chocolate. <laughs> Ooh. I, I, I feel like I'm smelling exceptional pussy over here. Um <laughs> What people can do is go to bullsandqueens.com, and that's pretty much where I live at. And I, I live on Twitter as well, but you can get my Twitter on there. But you can join my free OnlyFans on there, and I have my little kinky, fun NSFW adventures that are on there on video and uh, pictures. And then get on my Twitter. And then I also have a free gift. It's called the Bulls, Queens, and Cucks Survival Guide to the Lifestyle. So I get that for free and it's on bullsandqueens.com page as well. Awesome. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I've had a fantastic time and I think that we're going to have some conversations about uh, a business on making candles and shit like that. For me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we've got some work to do but thank you for joining me on the show today thank you Vitas I love every time I get to speak with you Okay, that's going to be it for this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. I hope you had a great time. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. You can subscribe to the show and check out the Venus Vault and register for Pillow Talk events. You can also submit a question for the show. Now, make sure you go to ASN Magazine. I have a monthly article that I write for that magazine, ASN Lifestyle Magazine, and Full Swap Radio has an app now, and the Venus Cuckoldress podcast is on every Tuesday at 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central Time, so check it out. My handle on Twitter is at CuckoldressV if you want to follow me on there. That's it for today, and we'll see you next time.
Hi, I'm Venus, host of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast and founder of Venus Connections. This message is for all of the beautiful, single, sex-positive women listening to this episode. What if I told you you could have a loving, adoring, and faithful partner and have exciting and thrilling encounters with others? But he loves it that way. In fact, you both love it that way. This kind of relationship is all about celebrating you. You can have that. You can have it all. You can learn more at venusconnections.com. That's venusconnections.com. It's matchmaking for loving, cuckolding relationships.